You know that sinking feeling. We all do. You reach for your pocket or purse or wherever you keep it, but your phone is not there. Thankfully, most of the time, it's still somewhere safe, the desk, the other room, etc. But what if it wasn't? What if you came home from a concert to discover that your phone was missing? Or worse, you came home to discover that your computer was stolen? In this video, I will teach you how to use device encryption to protect your data from theft. Viewers, do you find these videos helpful? Do you get value out of the videos the new oil produces? Well, then help us keep going. There's a variety of ways to support us, but in this video, we want to highlight our Monero donation option. Monero, for those who don't know, is a cryptocurrency with a high focus on anonymity. Unlike Bitcoin, Monero is designed to be as anonymous as possible and has lower transaction fees than Bitcoin. If you're a cryptocurrency enthusiast and want to support the new oil, we highly encourage you to consider Monero. Having said that, we do still accept Bitcoin and a variety of other methods, both fiat and crypto, as well as affiliate links that give us a small cut if you sign up for a paid plan on that service. Again, if you get value out of these videos and are able to help support us, please consider doing so. The link to our Monero wallet will be in the description along with all of our usual support methods. So much of our lives are digital, and chances are that if you're watching this, you have at least some digital information that you want to protect. Some data can be easily protected. For example, you can use a password manager that locks after a period of inactivity instead of using a text file or saving your passwords in the browser. Side note, if you do that, stop immediately. A lot of malware is capable of grabbing information out of your browser, including passwords. But not all of it is protected so easily. You still have things like photos, documents, and other files that you may not wish to be accessed by just anyone. In theory, you could save those files in one of the encrypted cloud providers I discussed in my last video, but unless you want to download the file syncing application, this becomes unwieldy and cumbersome, and also doesn't really stop from theft or local access, which is kind of what I'm focusing on in this video. The files are still decrypted on your device. And that also goes for certain encrypted messaging applications like Signal, Matrix, or a ProtonMail bridge. Anyone who has access to the device can access your data in a decrypted state. Simply adding a password to log into your computer is not going to be enough to stop any random person. It's actually incredibly easy to just pop out the hard drive of your computer, hook it up via USB cable, and read everything on it. So how can we protect our data from physical unauthorized access? The answer is full disk encryption. If you don't know what encryption is, I recommend you pause and go watch my video about it right now. I'm going to assume that you have done so and move on. Full disk encryption is exactly what it sounds like. It's encrypting the entire device. Some software allows you to encrypt specific files or folders like PGP and Veracrypt, which I will discuss in a moment. Veracrypt, PGP is gonna get a whole separate video, so hold on to that one. I will touch on that a little bit, but for now, I wanna focus on how to encrypt the entire device. I personally consider this something that everyone watching this video should do, especially for highly mobile devices like phones, tablets, and laptops. There will be a slight performance loss, but unless you're like a professional Call of Duty player, it's gonna be really, really minimal. And the security and peace of mind that you get in return is going to be immeasurable. Let me give you a real example that happened to me. I used to be a freelance audio video technician. This meant that I worked at a lot of different events and different locations and around a lot of different people. It wasn't always the same crew. One time I was hired as part of a general labor crew to help tear down after a conference. As usual, I brought my laptop because a lot of the time with these events, they run late, you never know exactly when they're gonna end, so it's useful to be able to knock out some work while you're waiting. Once we got started, I shut down my laptop and threw it in my backpack and got to work. Afterwards, my backpack was nowhere to be found. I asked everyone who would work the event and eventually reported it to security. I went home frustrated and annoyed, but not scared. You see, my laptop is full disk encrypted. And as I mentioned before, I keep weekly backups. I wasn't looking forward to buying a whole new laptop, especially when I had one that still worked just fine, but I knew that all of my data was safe, all my emails, my contracts, my encryption keys. And because I keep regular backups, I knew that none of my data was actually gone. At most, I might've lost a few days of work, but that's about it. Before I move on, just for those who are wondering, this story actually has a happy ending. It turns out that one of the clients accidentally grabbed my backpack thinking that it was theirs. They had brought several pieces of luggage to the conference and although my backpack wasn't in their pile, it was close enough that they thought it was theirs, so they grabbed it. Once they realized it was not theirs, they promptly returned it to the security desk who called me, I came and got it the same night. Everybody lived happily ever after. But what if it hadn't happened that way? Remember, I was a freelancer. I don't think I've ever seen any of those people ever again. 
It would have been really easy for a malicious person to grab my device and look through it. Sure, they were probably more likely going to pawn it and sell it. They still could have looked through it. They could have had access to all of my email because I use Thunderbird. So all my emails are decrypted and they could send emails as me. They would see contracts. They would see payment details. They would see passwords, etc. I mean, there was a lot of sensitive information on there. This applies to lost phones too. People accidentally leave phones lying around all the time. One of the writers for the immensely popular TV show Doctor Who once left a script for an upcoming Christmas special in a taxi. People are human. They make mistakes and they lose things. Imagine who might find it. Maybe they'll be a good person to return it. Maybe they won't. Think about the things you keep on your devices. Maybe banking apps or sensitive photos, sensitive conversations that you just don't want other people to look at. That doesn't mean you have anything to hide. It means you're a normal person. With all that in mind, let's start talking about how to full disk encrypt your devices so that nobody can ever access the data without your consent. Let's start with phones because these are the easiest. Just add a password. With both Android and iOS, the devices are not encrypted by default, but as long as you add any kind of lock, whether it's a pin, password, pattern, or even a biometric lock like a fingerprint or face ID, the device becomes encrypted. iPhones have been like this for years, but for Android, this has been a relatively recent development. So if you have an older Android, be sure to check your settings and see if there's an option to encrypt the device or any SD cards. Now, real quick, let's pause here to discuss passwords. Your encryption will only be as strong as your password, so it's important to pick a good one. In a perfect world, the best solution is a strong password or passphrase. However, this is not always realistic with a phone. For a lot of people, it can be unwieldy and difficult. This leaves us with two possible solutions. One option is to set a really strong password, but then also to enable biometric locks on top of that, so that way you don't have to type the password in every time. Anyone who's not you would need to figure out the password, but you still get ease of use. However, biometrics are kind of a controversial subject. First of all, you have to trust Apple or Google. Both of these companies claim that they don't collect your biometric data and that all of that data stays on the device. Even if you trust that, you still have to be aware that biometric locks can be fooled. When Apple's Face ID first premiered, there were tons of people who rushed to show that they could be very easily unlocked. In the case of fingerprints, other researchers have shown that they can very cheaply and easily create a rubber fingerprint that can be used to unlock it. And in one case in particular, a woman unlocked her husband's phone with his fingerprint while he was sleeping. This technology is constantly improving, but it is still not perfect. There's also a genuine concern about the possibility of a data leak. If Apple and or Google turn out to be lying and they are actually keeping a hash of your fingerprint, it's possible that that hash could get exposed someday, just like passwords do. Now, at this time, I'm not sure how you would reverse engineer a hash into a fingerprint, but technology changes and it's entirely possible that could happen someday. And if it does, you can't just change your fingerprint the same way you can change a password. I'm not saying don't go this route. I'm just saying there are genuine concerns that you need to weigh. If you decide that a biometric lock is too risky for any reason, which I totally respect, then the second best option, in my opinion, is to compromise. Instead of a strong password, use a strong pin. I recommend at least six numbers if that's allowed. Technically, the more the better. In the case of Android, you also have the option to do a pattern swipe. Personally, I think that these are better than nothing, but I would recommend a pin over a pattern. Now, keep in mind, in this scenario, we are defending specifically against like random criminals. This is probably not going to stop law enforcement or the NSA. We're just trying to stop random people who happen to steal or find your device. Congratulations, your device is now encrypted. But with phones, there's one more thing you can do to make it safe, and that is adding a SIM pin. Your SIM card doesn't just make your phone able to make and take calls. It also stores your phone number, billing information, carrier information, and contacts. This means that even if someone finds your fully encrypted phone, they can still just pop the SIM card out and put it into their phone and be you. They can see all your contacts, they can send and receive calls and texts as you, and they might even be able to access some of your carrier information. The quickest way to stop this is to lock your SIM card with a PIN. Before you attempt this, be sure to contact your carrier and ask if they know your PIN. Chances are that they do. So this begs the question, does that mean that you shouldn't bother with a SIM PIN? I mean, after all, someone else knows the PIN and they can disable it or give it away at any time. I would still argue yes. Again, this video, we're not talking about hiding from the government. We're talking about stopping the random people who find your device. And a SIM PIN will definitely stop those people. Once you get the pin from your carrier, you can change it if you want, because in a lot of cases, it's a default like the phone number, and you can find the option to lock your SIM card in the device settings. 
Okay, we finally got a fully protected phone. Now let's talk about desktop devices. There are two options here. Well, there's technically four, but there's, there's generally two options. There's the built-in encryption that comes with the system, and then there's Veracrypt. In the case of Mac OS, for example, all Mac devices come with a proprietary encryption program called FileVault. To begin, open your system preferences. From there, select security and privacy and then navigate to the file vault tab. In order to make changes, you may have to unlock the tab by entering your administrative account password. Most likely the account that you're using is an administrator account. So this would be the regular password that you use to log in. In a future video, I will talk about why you should not use admin accounts 24 seven, but for now, just enter your password and then select turn on file vault. A window will pop up asking you if you want to allow password resets via your iCloud account. I do not recommend this as it presents a security risk, and also iCloud just comes with all kinds of privacy risks, but we'll talk about that another time. Instead, in the next window, you will be given a recovery key like the one that you see here. Make sure to write this down somewhere safe, like a password manager or in a safe, because if you forget your admin password, this can be used to decrypt your device. It's basically a backup, but again, keep it somewhere safe or else anyone who finds it can also use it to decrypt your device. Once it is written down, simply select continue and let your device encrypt. If you are a Linux user, every Linux distro I personally have ever used comes with an option during install to enable Linux Unified Key Setup or Lux Encryption. Lux is an open source encryption utility that is primarily aimed at Linux users. It does offer some support for other operating systems, but that falls outside the scope of this video. Lux is reasonably safe to use, just as safe as any other option in this video. If you choose not to enable this during installation for whatever reason, your ability to add it after the fact may vary depending on the distro. If you really, really want Lux, you may have to reinstall. If that's not an option or you don't wanna do that, listen on. For Windows, things get a little bit more complicated. Windows offers their own proprietary solution, similar to the Mac File Vault, called BitLocker. The problem is that BitLocker is not available for all Windows users. Currently, it is only available for all Windows 11 users and Windows 10 Pro users. That means Windows 10 home users do not have access. Unfortunately, due to my own device limitations, I was not able to replicate the steps to enable BitLocker. However, this documentation from Microsoft seems very straightforward, so I will leave that link in the sources. In an earlier video, I preached the value of open source technology. If you are using Windows 10 Home, if you do not trust BitLocker or FileVault, or if you are using Linux and cannot add Lux or reinstall to add Lux, there is hope and it is called Veracrypt. I mentioned this very briefly in my last video and now I will dig in deeper. Veracrypt is the successor of TrueCrypt, an older and highly regarded encryption software. TrueCrypt was discontinued in 2014, citing the fact that full disk encryption softwares had now become accessible and relatively standard in most operating systems, rendering them redundant. And they were talking about things like FileVault and BitLocker. This program lives on in the form of Veracrypt, a fork of TrueCrypt that is still being maintained and updated. Veracrypt has powerful encryption features that even BitLocker is missing and has even been audited. With that, let's talk about how to use Veracrypt to full disk encrypt your device. In this demonstration, I will be using a Windows device, but the process should be about the same on Mac and Linux as well. We'll start by opening our web browser and navigating to veracrypt.fr. In this example, I'm using a virtual machine, which is something I will discuss another time. It's basically a temporary computer, so ignore the fact that I'm using Edge. Just pretend that it's Brave or Firefox. Once you are on Veracrypt's website, you will navigate to Downloads and select the file that you need for your operating system. For most Windows users, this will be the .exe file. For Mac, it will be the .dmg, and for Linux, it depends on your distribution. That's also a topic for an upcoming video. Once the file downloads, install it accordingly. I recommend that you actually read the terms of service, as always, and consider donating if you're able to help keep the Veracrypt project running. It's totally worth it. They provide an absolutely vital service for those of us who care about security. Once the program is installed, go ahead and fire it up. 
From the menu, select System and then Encrypt System Partition slash Drive. For the most part, the defaults are fine. You can just kind of blow through most of these. On the first page, it asks if you want to make a normal or hidden partition. Hidden partitions are outside the scope of this video. If you have a high threat model, this may be worth looking into, but make sure that you consult Veracrypt's documentation so that you understand how to use it, how it functions, and what the risks are. For 99% of people watching this video, normal is just fine. On the next page, it asks if you want to encrypt the system partition or the whole drive. If you can, I suggest encrypting the whole drive. If this is not wise, you will get a pop-up warning you not to do so like you see here. In that case, go back and select encrypt the system partition instead. Ultimately, your data will be safe either way, so this is just to make sure that your computer can still boot up. Next, you will be asked if you dual boot or not. Again, this is something that I will cover shortly. Then you will be asked to select your encryption and hashing algorithms. The defaults of AES and SHA-256 are totally okay. Although if you're able to select SHA-512 from the hash, I would recommend that. I unfortunately did not think to look for that when I did this screen grab, so I'm not sure if that's an option. If it's not an option, 256 is totally fine. Don't worry, you're not really losing any security. Next, you will be asked to pick a password. This should be a good passphrase, and it should be something that you can remember. If you forget this passphrase, you will not be able to unlock your computer in files, so don't forget it. I used a bad weak passphrase here because this is just a demonstration, so ignore that and pretend I used a good one. On the next page, you will be asked to move your mouse around randomly to create entropy. To be honest, this goes a little bit over my head and it would take a long time to explain. Basically, just wiggle the mouse around until the green bar at the bottom fills up all the way and then continue. Next, your keys will be generated. You can safely skip that. Next, it will ask you if you want to create a rescue disk. This is really important. Save this file to an external USB somewhere. I have had times where the hard drive in my device starts to get old and deteriorate, and without this rescue disk, you may find yourself unable to decrypt the device and recover the data when you move to a new disk. This is especially bad if there is sudden disk failure. So save this somewhere you can access it if the device fails. Again, like an encrypted cloud provider or a backup USB. And once again, keep this somewhere safe, because if this falls into the wrong hands, they can very easily decrypt your entire device. Next, you will be asked to pick a wipe mode. Think of each pass as another wall in front of your data. Each pass will make it harder for an attacker to recover the data on the disk. In my opinion, pretty much any option is fine. Again, we're protecting against thieves, not government agencies. I like to go for three pass because personally, I believe it's the best combination of convenience and security. However, be aware that each pass requires more time. So the encryption will take longer, especially if you have an older device or a device with a lot of storage space. Once you've done all this, Veracrypt will ask you to reboot the computer so it can run some tests to ensure that everything is functioning as as expected. Once you reboot, it will ask you to put in your encryption password, and this is what will happen once the device is encrypted. It'll do this every time. If everything goes smooth, you will reboot, log in, and start the encryption process. If not, you will be met with a warning that something went wrong and the process will stop. One last note, if you start encrypting your device, but it takes longer than you expected and you need to shut it down for any reason, there is an option to pause or defer the encryption process safely and then resume it later. And that is the process to full disk encrypt your laptops, desktops, whatever kind of computer, Mac, Windows, Linux, doesn't matter. Now, there is one more thing I promised I would talk about in a previous video, and that is using Veracrypt to encrypt your cloud backups. If you've decided that Cryptomator is not right for you, or you don't need mobile access to your encrypted cloud, Veracrypt is one possible option. Basically, the way this works is simply to create a container the same size as your available storage, or however much storage you want to be encrypted. Keep in mind that if you do this, you can't share individual files. So this is purely for your own purposes. With that in mind, let's talk about how to make a container. This process is very similar to the full disk encryption, but this time once you start up Veracrypt, you'll open Volumes in the menu and then select Create New Volume. When the wizard pops up, select Create Encrypted File Container. Quick note here, you can select Encrypt a non-system partition or drive to encrypt an external hard drive or second storage hard drive in your device. Again, the process is pretty much the same. You will skip the next screen until you get to Volume Location. Here you will click Select File. Now in this example, I'm using the strategy I mentioned in my last video where I make a Veracrypt container in a cloud service to use as a backup location. In this example, I'm using Microsoft OneDrive as my backup, who offers five gigabytes of free storage. In this case, I navigate to OneDrive and name my container, and I'm calling it container, but you can name it anything you want and put it anywhere you want. 
On the next screen, I'm asked to pick my encryption and hashing algorithms again, and also to pick a container size. I want to leave a little bit of breathing room because if I make this container exactly five gigabytes, it'll actually be a little bit bigger so that I get the full storage space. Think of it kind of like building a box. If you want the storage space inside the box to be two square feet, for example, then the total volume of the box is actually gonna be a little bit larger because of the thickness of the wood. It's kind of a similar principle. So in this case, being that I'm using a cloud provider, that little extra bit of space may cause the file not to be uploaded because it exceeds the amount of storage that I have available. So just to be cautious, I'm gonna go a little bit under the available storage space and go with four gigs. Once that's done, I am once again asked to pick a strong password, which once again, I did not for this demonstration. And then to move the mouse for entropy and the encryption process begins. Once the container is encrypted, I can mount the container to a drive letter as shown and start putting files inside of it. Once I dismount the container, the files will be safely encrypted. You can also make containers for any number of reasons, like adding additional security or sending files securely over unsecured channels. Congratulations, you have now encrypted all of your devices, which should give you a massive amount of protection and peace of mind. Again, I wanna mention threat models. In this video, I have not covered anything that is guaranteed to protect you against the NSA, CIA, FBI, Mossad, GCHQ, or any other government level agency. All of the encryption methods that I have shared do not have any weaknesses that I am currently aware of. But if you have a very high threat model, you should not be taking the advice of some random YouTuber. Please do your research, know the shortcomings of the various encryption methods and plan accordingly. However, this kind of stuff will protect you against most malicious attackers. The advice in this video will protect you against a thief accessing your data or someone trying to snoop on your messages or other content behind your back. Again, always remember the limitations of any technology, what it's designed to protect you against, and how to use it correctly. Before I go, I want to remind you that you can help us keep going and keep making new videos and content. In this video, we are specifically highlighting Monero, which is a privacy-focused cryptocurrency as a way to support us and keep us going. If you want the closest thing possible to cash, but still digital, Monero is it. That is the best way to send money and still be anonymous. As always, we still accept other cryptocurrencies, fiat currencies, and affiliate links where we get a small kickback if you sign up for a paid account using one of our links. Every little bit helps. Thank you so much. If you need a written version of any of the information I talked about in this video or other information about encryption or other services to help protect your privacy and security, be sure to visit thenewoil.org.